we all know the trusted original Prusa 3D printers. But what about this one? Half the price with one week delivery? Is it any good or just a fake? I will show you how I tested both of them head to head, like safety features, heat up time, noise levels, print quality, temperature distribution, and so on. If you follow me through the whole video, you will get an overview what are the main differences and what this 3D printer capable of. This video was not sponsored by any means. I purchased these printers by myself. So let's get started. After I assembled the printer, I started with the calibration and run first the self test. It was interesting that the print fan test has to be assisted with the check of the spinning fans. By the original Prusa this question did not pop up. After the all correct message, a quick Z offset calibration was made on an original Prusa textured PEI powder coated spring steel sheet. The printer came with an older firmware version, but the firmware update through the Prusa slicer and the USB cable, which was also included, was no problem. The only two differences that I could find in the menu are the unknown state of the filament sensor and the lack of the LCD brightness adjusting option. I printed all the test prints with the previous 3.9.0 firmware version and just now came out the new firmware which fixed the filament sensor recognizing issue. After adjusting the belts to be between the recommended 250 and 300 range, we are good to go. Well, almost. After I started the first print, I quickly realized that the nozzle temperature fluctuation is too big. Plus minus 6 degrees Celsius is definitely too much. So a last PID calibration was needed, which solved this issue. It's time to test the printers. As the first test, I measured the required time for a PETG preheat process. The clone reached the 230 degrees Celsius nozzle temperature 5 seconds earlier as the original Prusa. Checking the voltage levels, the clone was spot on. The original Prusa had a little lower voltage levels as it should be. This could also be the reason why the same heat pad quicker heated up on the clone as on the original Prusa. The clone also won the nozzle cooldown test to 50 degrees Celsius, where the nozzle fan switches off. And here not just with a few seconds, but with more than 4 minutes. And now the noise levels. If you use a headphone you will hear the original push in your left ear and the clone in the right, first from 1 meter distance.
clone is in average around 7 decibels louder, but all this extra noise comes from the nozzle fan. So let's check how do their fans perform. The original Prusa print cooling fan reached 1.2 meter per second higher airspeed on full RPM, whereas the nozzle cooling fan was stronger with 1 meter per second on the clone. Interesting fact that the RPM values by the print fan was the same, but the nozzle fan was 3000 RPM more on the clone. This means that the original Prusa print fan is more efficient. The quicker clone cooling time and also the loudness is the result of its significantly higher nozzle fan speed. And now the safety features. I was really curious about this test because this is one of the most important difference between other printers and the original Prusa, which makes it so reliable. As you can see the clone performs really well. The only difference that I could find is that the clone do not move as far as the original Prusa by a power loss but it was enough to not melt the already printed parts. And here is what at the end really counts, the printing quality. Even by using the same blue PETG filament and the same G-code with the PETG filament profile from the Prusa slicer, I got more shiny prints and also more stringing on the clone, which are the signs of a too high printing temperature. So as next step, I performed a temperature measurement test. The thermal camera pictures show not too much difference between the two printers, except one, which I found interesting, and that is the part where the power supply plays. It looks like that the power supply heats up the frame more on the clone. As a next step, I took four thermometers and placed them first onto the bed and also onto the nozzle, nearby their built-in thermometers. After the temperatures are stabilized, the heated bed temperatures showed the same temperature between the two printers, but on the clone, the nozzle temperature was around 10 degrees higher as on the original Prusa. To check the power supply and the extruded temperatures, I measured them also during a temperature tower test print. At the end of this 4 hours long print, the power supply temperature on the clone was 4 degrees Celsius, whereas the extruder temperature on the original Prusa was 6 degrees Celsius higher. Which means at the same time that the clone is less likely prone to cause heat creep problems. Analyzing the printed temperature tower from the original Prusa, it is getting shiny around 230 degrees Celsius. The temperature tower from the clone already at 220 degrees Celsius is shiny. So I printed another lower temperature range tower, which is normally for PLA, but it worked out with the PTG filament also, and here we finally can see the transition around 215 degrees Celsius. Knowing that, I reprinted the benches with different setups on both printers to be able to compare them properly. The material is the same PTG, and on the top you can see the temperatures and the layer heights. I would say that the 225 degrees Celsius version is the sweet spot by the clone. So after all these tests, you can decide yourself which printer fits to you better. In my personal opinion, if you are on the beginning of your journey with 3D printers and you are patient, and the money is no problem, then go with the original Prusa because of its support, quality parts and well-tested printer profiles which makes the whole printing process much easier. On the other hand, if you want to get your printer quicker and you are on the budget and not afraid of tweaking a little bit, the clone can deliver the same quality with the same reliability if you set up your hardware and printing profiles properly. I put some links in the description from where you can order both tested printers. I also recorded the unboxing and assembly process where I show you how can you build up your printer properly and where you can see the differences between the original Prusa and the clone parts. If you are interested on this video, then consider to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to get notified when I'm uploading it. If you found this video useful, then hit the thumbs up. If you have any questions, then write down in the comment section and I do my best to answer them. Till then, happy printing and see you next time.